and welcome to another Sea Life Sketchbook session where we draw, discuss and delve into the ocean's most wonderful but weirdest sea creatures. We've already covered quite a lot in this series from why starfish are really really evil, they are, and why limpets teeth are made of one of the strongest materials in the entire world. So if that sounds like something that you are interested in, then go hit the subscribe button below and click this link after the video to watch the rest of the playlist of this series. But what are we going to be talking about today? Well, I can't continue without saying about my new studio art room setup. And the creature today is going to be inspired by, well, this. Today we are talking, of course, about a sea gooseberry. A sea gooseberry, for all intents and purposes, if you've ever seen one in the wild, is a clear circular blob. I imagine about the size of a gooseberry, but I have never seen a gooseberry. Have you ever seen a gooseberry? If we're imagining sizes, it's somewhere between a very large grape and a very small plum. You are most likely to see these washed up on the tide line or maybe one or two in a rock pool. These species are usually pelagic, which means they spend their entire lives floating around in the ocean. But they are quite small and when storms occur or they just get caught out by a current, they can be brought to shore and often washed up. But there's far more to this species than just the clear blob I am showing you now. And the reason they are inspired by my amazing party fairy lights. To see it properly, we are going to have to delve into the cover of darkness. You're probably wondering why we didn't go into darkness then. It's because this is a sketching show and therefore I need light to see. So instead, we're going to bring the darkness Our sketchbook nice and dark which means we're going to be able to really see the sea gooseberry and all of its incredible features and before we get to the reason why the sea gooseberry is inspired by these lights I want to draw your attention see what I did there draw I'm literally gonna draw it to sea gooseberry's tentacles and why they are so incredible gooseberry has two tentacles which it uses for feeding but they are incredibly incredibly long they are 25 to 50 times longer than the body of the sea gooseberry itself so looking at the sea gooseberry and it having tentacles you it wouldn't be out of the question to say that it looks like and probably is a jellyfish well actually you would be wrong but well Confusingly, yes they look similar, but they're actually not really related at all. In fact, they're quite distantly related. They're in completely different phylums. So if you're a species that is in different phylums, then you are pretty much quite far away from each other down the evolutionary tree. I mean, even more confusingly, um, the jellyfish are in the phylum Cynodarians or Nidarians, if you don't pronounce the C, I never know. And the... Um, Sea gooseberry is also in a phylum beginning with C called the Cetenophores or Tenophores if you don't pronounce the C. So 
I mean, they're not really doing us any favours to not be confused, are they? And by they, I mean taxonomists. If you're a bit confused by the taxonomy and the classifications, then make sure to subscribe because I have a video that's going to come out in the future explaining exactly how and why marine biologists like to classify each species down in these different fancy names. Both of these species are really ancient and really old. They evolved and came to being at least 500 million years ago. But whereas jellyfish use stinging cells called nematocysts to catch their prey, instantly paralysing them before, you know, eating them, uh, sea gooseberries don't have stinging cells. They have something called a colloblast cell, which is actually a sticky type of cell. So instead of instantly paralysing everything that it catches, it will catch them, make it sticky, tangle them up in their incredibly long tentacles, and then slowly reel them in. The suspense of death in the poor thing that it catches as it reels and reels and reels until it finally reels it in and then it nips it. You may think that a seagoosebury isn't a very harsh predator, but it is. It feeds on loads of things like the larvae of crabs and barnacle larvae, and it can even eat eggs, small crustaceans, anything that it can basically tangle in its tentacles and slowly, slowly reel in and, and eat. What's even cooler is that it can go to a lot of effort to do this. In certain parts of the world, it can exhibit dial vertical migration. I go into dial vertical migration a lot more in my deep sea video, which you can check out here, but a quick summary is that species like uh, plankton, zooplankton, exhibit a migration twice a day, which is the dial part of the term, and vertically because they go up and down in the water column. They can go from about a thousand metres, maybe if not more, to the surface basically every single day. And they normally, the normal way for this trend to go up and down is when it starts to get dark, they head to the surface at dusk, and when it starts to get light, they go down to the deep sea. And that's just to try and help stop all of the many, many organisms in the ocean that like to feed on them and that hopes that if they're down in the dark during the day, then they won't spot the big blooms of plankton and big masses of plankton in the water column and, and won't get eaten. But what's even cooler about that, and I do go into this more in the deep sea video, is that there are things like whales and fish that all do dial vertical migration too, not because they want to avoid the light, but because they're following the food. And in that list of the species that, that follow those plankton, sea gooseberries are one of them so they too make this thousand meter um, migration through the pressure changes through the, the light changes with these species so that it can go and hunt this zooplankton but how and why do sea gooseberries remind me of my lights smooth on the arm well, they remind me of these wonderful lights. Because if you look at a sea gooseberry's body, they have eight rows of these kind of panels that when they're out of the water, you can't really see them. You can kind of see like the slight lines, a bit of a shimmer, but you can't see what's on them. And in each of these little panel rows are loads and loads and loads of cilia, which are just teeny weeny little hairs, a lot like the hairs you kind of get on your arms. And they beat in unison to move forward in the water column, so they're all flapping at the same time, and that's how the sea gooseberry moves. But when they're underwater, especially when a light is shining on them, they exhibit these wonderful neon colours. Get it now, you see the neon colours, lights, whole point of the video. Lots of people will mistake this for bioluminescence, which is what happens in the deep sea a lot, where the organism itself uses energy to produce light 
often for things like mating or for um, like the anglerfish to attract prey to eat. This isn't actually bioluminescence, it's diffraction, which is a lot like what happens when a rainbow forms. It's how the hairs themselves kind of disperse the light and gives this amazing bioluminescent-esque appearance. In summary, this has been a video where I got some new fairy lights and wanted to make a better transition into this new art studio thing, so I used the Seagrasbury as a way to do that. I hope you enjoyed, I'm having a lot of fun, so just sitting in this room and feeling all fancy with my fairy lights. There are tons of awesome new videos coming out on this channel soon, including more Sea Life sketchbook sessions. So if you've liked this, then please like, share and subscribe. It really helps support me and my channel so that I can keep producing videos like this and even more like going rock pooling and loads and loads of cool content in the future. I hope you have a fantastic week. I will see you next Wednesday because I make videos every single Wednesday. Have a great week, everyone. Bye.